All right, well, what's up, guys? Uh, what's up? Play hard. Is that you, Mark? What's up, dude? Is he in the comments? Yeah. Does the audio and everything sound good? Yeah, how's the audio? Are you guys going to have to help us out through this first one since this is our first podcast. Uh, this is going to be like a live stream of what we're doing, and then we'll go back later and put out an, a separate audio file uh, with maybe a little more cleaned up. We'll have an intro music, outro. And we're going to put it on YouTube. We're going to put it on YouTube. We'll have it available on these other platforms, but this is our first. It's a little off, but not bad. Yep. Sounds great. It's a little off. I'm trying to... What think. up? Who's post that killer? Post haste killer. It sounds great. Yeah. You guys let us know if the audio is too loud, if it's the timing's off, why not? And you're going to help us work through this so we can bring you the best quality. Like I said, we're going to put these on other platforms. Twitch is just our first platform, so we can do a live stream with you guys. We can interact. What's up, Adam? Yo, yo, Adam. Uh, so just bear with us on this. But we're really excited. This is something we've talked about, an idea that we've had for a little bit. Since we wanted, yeah, since we started it. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but me and Tanner both love podcasts. Stuff like Joe Rogan, uh, Tom Segura's podcast called Your Mom's House. Yeah, podcast. I've been listening to these uh crime mystery ones have you guys heard of like serial or s-town yeah i think so yeah they have tons of different they're podcasts. pretty sweet so yeah. i've been listening to those lately but so i listen podcasts. to podcasts all the time and there's also disc golf podcasts like smashbox tv uh disc golf answer man anthony over at dynamic disc just started one uh it's called the disc golf discussion the disc golf discussion so shout out to anthony for doing that we were working with him and i like doing that so we thought it was only right that we did a podcast as well because we can't get enough disc golf content. Yeah. It's got to eat it all up. Sorry, I'm trying to make the settings yeah. right and figure out if we're actually saving this recording. Yo, yo, timing is a little off yet. Hmm. Adam said sword, sword and Scale is a good one for a true crime. Sword and Scale. I actually heard about that, too. Uh, yeah. I, have, I think I have it in my podcast. Hey, Mark, what do you mean the timing's off? Is the audio off of the video? Is it, like, lagging? Because I know there's like a slight delay. So just work hanging there with us, guys. We're doing it. This is the first time. Just talk, Nick. Talk just to keep people. talking. So for people who don't know who you told you to call Bizarre, I know we have a couple people watching right now. But for those of you who don't know, I'm Nick, Nick Vanderlinda, PDGA number 77971. And this is Tanner, Tanner LaBelle. And your PDGA number is? Uh... What kind of disc golfer doesn't know his own PDGA number? Come on, man. Come on. 101326. One, That's one, actually pretty easy because one, one, 13326. Three, if you double that, it's 26. There you go. Okay. So, Whatever floats your boat. 10, 13, 26. 10, 13, 26. That's Tanner. He's over that 100,000 mark, which is pretty cool. Um, so if you're under the 100,000 mark, I feel like eventually we're going to be like old relics. You know, there'll be no, we're the last five digit PDGA numbers here. Your lips move before the audio hits. It is not real bad, but it is there. All right, give me one sec. I'm going to try to fix it. All right, Tanner's going to try to fix it. This is super I good podcast. Oh. Um, comes up there, but my screen um, is. Five, five, yeah. Mark's 55372. Five, Dang. So he's on the five fives. You know, eventually there's not going to be even. Like the oldest people playing disc golf are probably going to be, you know, the five digit people before we know it. So that's going to be pretty crazy. So I started playing disc golf uh, in around 2015. I had heard about it and tried it out a couple of times uh, when I was around sixth and seventh grade inside of the church I was hanging, uh, going to at the time. A couple of friends and the youth leaders there uh, did object golf and they had disc craft misprints for sale. And so I got my first disc I ever got was a, a cyclone, which they don't make anymore. If any of you, and if any of you guys know anything about old Discraft ones, it's an X cyclone. Um, I actually have it around here somewhere. I could get up and go grab it. But anyways, I didn't know a lot about disc golf. Didn't know there were other discs. We just went. It was from you know this block of cement to that tree over there, and that was my first kind of intro to it. And uh, so played it a few times, and then forgot about it. Went in through high school. You know, occasionally t touched around with it, never really understood the full concept of it until in 2015, uh, during that summer, me and one of my great friends, Andy Scarvey, 
he, uh, we who also played with me when we were doing that church. I was kind of he got intro to it as well. Uh, we went to Fort Silicon Disc Golf Course over in Lakewood, Washington, and uh, played. Started out on Raise Nine and had a blast. Raise Nine is a short, nice warm up nine hole course over there. If you've been out to St- Fort Silicon before, they have three courses, two eighteen holes, uh, northwest and the southeast. And then they have raised nine, and it's like the perfect warm-up course. So played that. I don't even remember what I shot, but all I remember is it probably had one good throw, and it just got me hooked. It was so fun, just that feeling of throwing one good shot. So I started playing then, started playing every day. Uh, I went, played for a a few months, and then went into my first unsanctioned tournament, the Riverside Halloween, pardon me, the Riverside Halloween Scream, where they decorate all the holes. Uh, Riverside's in Sumner, Washington, another one not too far from Lakewood. And it was fun, and I played an intermediate, and it was one round during the day and one round at night. Now, I think the only round that counted for the tournament was the one during the day. And I played an intermediate, not really knowing uh, much, and I ended up winning. So that was fun. I got a couple of discs, and that's when I was hooked. You get one taste of victory, and like you're never going to turn back, especially if you got lucky like me, and it happened kind of quickly. And that was an intermediate, and then from there, just took off. Started playing tournaments immediately, signed up for the PDGA. And now here we are, uh, a couple years later. So I'd say I've been playing, like seriously been playing disc golf for around two years, or maybe a little more now. And yeah, so that's my story. Now we're doing here. Me and Tanner started this disc golf company called, media company called Utility Disc Golf. Just an idea that we both had. And we decided to act on it. Tanner pushed it really hard, and now we're here doing a podcast for you guys. Yeah. So I'm Nick. Utility Disc Golf. That's for everybody that doesn't know. I didn't get it fixed oh, audio in that time. <laughs> didn't fix audio time? That's all right. But we're from Spokane, Washington. I'm originally from Gig Harbor, Washington, which is right next to Tacoma, over on the west side of Washington State. And I moved over here about kind of around a year and a half ago. And uh, Did we meet like a year and a half ago? Was it right after you moved to Spokane? Yeah, I think we met pretty quickly on the disc golf course, of course. The disc golf course, of course. What was it? Was it Greenlight Dubs? No, it was just down river. We just ran into each other. Oh, I think yeah. me and Aaron ran into you. Yeah, so we just ran into Tanner, and uh, we kind of clicked really well, and I saw Tanner was, like, super hooked on it. He wasn't that good back then, but he played so much now, and uh, I have trouble beating him. It's definitely a competition every time we go out and play with each other. So that's fun. So now I'm here in Spokane, originally from Gig Harbor, Washington. All right. Uh, sweet. I think I found it, so let me see. All right. Now try not to audio. That was me stalling, guys. So thanks for bearing with us. Uh, I don't want to enable push to talk. And Adam says he's getting his PDJ number next month. That's cool. Yeah, I signed up for the PDGA. Uh, oh, there's six people watching right now. And I just bought the professional one. I was like, screw it. Yeah, I signed up for all these, There's all these new rules about like getting money and stuff. I was like, I don't want to have it taken out of my winnings later down the road. I might as well, what is it, $30 more or something? I don't even know how much. I haven't looked into look the science pro. Okay, I'll look that up. Jamie? But, <laughs> but hey, but uh, Tanner, why don't you tell him? What happened before you even signed up for your PDJ and you played in a tournament? I think so, Chain Slayer's open here in Spokane, Washington. So I think I actually, to, to go more on a backstory of how I got started in disc golf, uh, first time I actually touched a disc golf disc was in high school, but it was only like for 20 minutes before a baseball practice, and I didn't know what this disc was. I was like, this is not a Frisbee. Like, I don't know how people are throwing it. How do you play catch <laughs> with this, like, thick rim? Like, that was my first initial thought. And I remember nobody knew how to throw backhand uh, that actually knew how to throw the, throw the disc properly. And the entire goal from the beginning of practice before the coaches got there was who could throw it from home plate over center field. And I don't think anybody did it. So uh, that's like it's probably 400, 410 400 feet, feet yeah. for people who've never played before to try to throw it that far? Yeah, I think we <laughs> threw it over left field, which was like 310. But It's that, $75 for... Pro? For, to be a pro. That's what I am. I'm a and pro. And it's $50, so it's $25 yeah. more. I was like, $25 more. I'm going to just get it set up. I don't want to be like, oh, here's and your win. was off of a pretty good uh, disc golf high when he signed up, yeah. which he'll get into in a little bit. So anyway, that was my first time actually playing or throwing a disc golf disc, and I think we were all fighting over the disc, and it was probably a beat-up DX yeah, destroyer. Yeah, what was it? You I can't remember. No? Um, maybe it was like one of those ones where Definitely you get in a three-pack. Definitely Yeah. <laughs> um, and nobody knew how to throw right. We were all just sidearming it. So that was my first intro. Never touched a disc golf disc after that. First time I threw after that, I think my buddy Jared got me into it. Maybe it was Aaron. I know when I first started at Davenport, which was two and a half years ago. That's a hotel we both work at. Yeah. Uh, 
me and my buddy Aaron, he started seven days before I did, which is funny because like Nick moved to Spokane and my buddy Aaron moved to Spokane. And right after they moved to Spokane, we became friends. So yeah, I, did, disc I just pick up the new disc guys. brings people together. That's so, why it's great. So me and Aaron were talking about disc golfing and I had just gone, I think maybe once or twice before that. So it was just kind of like odd that we both connected on it. So I think I've been playing for two and a half years too. Is that how long you've been playing? Yeah, I'd say like 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 consciously playing and oh, knowing. So me, what it's like is. first time picking up a disc. Yeah. To act like oh, first time going to a disc golf course to now is like two and a half years. Yeah. For me, I'd say yeah. For me, and I, when I say I play, you know, I've like I touched the disc and played before, but actually went to a course with baskets and understood what disc golf was was about two and a half years okay. ago. Okay. So I remember one of the first times I bought like nice discs. I bought a champion dart and i thought it was the coolest thing ever it was orange and then i bought a champion spider because i thought it would be really cool to have a spider-man logo on a disc that was a spider uh and then i got a blizzard dominator which i now that i think about it a dominator is like a speed 13 and like crazy Dude, dominators are crazy you grab some of my discs right here i don't yeah. have one up here so those are the that's how like ignorant i was i guess to like what plastics were and I was told that Champion was the best plastic. And in my head, I'm like, I need the best. Yeah, of course. So I Most just, expensive. I bought, so I bought everything. Fastest disc. Yeah, so I bought everything Champion in the beginning. Typical. And then even my putters, I think. And then <laughs> then I somewhat found out that Star was the best. And so then I was like, it's a little bit cheaper? Like a dollar? Yeah, it's only a couple. Yeah, it's like a and couple I was bucks. Like, and it's supposed to be better? Like in my head, I was like, I need the best. So I just started buying Star after that. Yeah. So anyway, uh, just cut to the chase. Last year was my first tournament, and mm-hmm. I never played one. Me and Tanner started playing casually, like, more and more often together. Yeah. And I played a lot of tournaments, so I feel like... And Nick was pretty good when we first started. Yeah, I would you do Tanner were, all the time. What, what were you shooting? No. I was shooting, like, plus 16, plus 18. No, I'm like, like, I'm, like, around no. par occasionally. Like, you were? Like, yeah. When we like, first I started. I was, like, occasionally, like, around par. Or I definitely have my over par rounds all the time. A little, you know, under par sometimes. But yeah. you were shooting, like, over every I was, like, t- plus 10, plus yeah. 18, we plus just, 16. It was, like, messing around. Yeah. And so once I started playing Nick with Nick, though, he kind of helped structure my game in terms of when to throw what disc and what spots on the course, which was nice. Yeah. Like I, I always, back. I always threw because <laughs> I can't. He beats me now, so it's not fair. It's like I don't know. You beat me probably sixty percent of the time. That's not enough. I need a hundred percent. So yeah, him just telling me like you know this is you could throw a putter off this tee yeah. instead of a driver. I was like, what? This is a driving shot. Yeah. So it's that off the tee got the driver. So that that like helped my game a lot. So then we go into our first tournament. I signed up for the Chain Slayers Open. Was it the first one this year? Yeah, that was the first annual Chain Slayers Open. Chain Slayers is a disc golf club out here in Spokane that runs the putting league, uh, maintains Downriver, which is one of the main courses here in Spokane. And uh, they do a lot for our community. So shout out to Chain Slayers for that. And yeah. they put on a tournament. Uh, one day seats here sponsored by Innova. Killer players packs. Hats. Pretty good. Uh, hats, discs. For, it was only... Forty dollars to sign up for advanced, right? You got a, you got a new, uh, like new snapback, a, you disc, got a mystere, sticker, or a goblin, or yeah, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, we signed up for that. I so, signed up like last minute. Tanner was already gonna play. So I was like, Nick, what should I? What what division should I sign up for? I've never played a tournament before. Mm-hmm. And he was like, You know, you've never played a tournament. Instead of playing advanced and maybe doing well. How about you just play intermediate because yeah. you've never played one and just maybe and try to And sometimes you're inconsistent. Like, you'd shoot really good. At this point, you'd, like, shoot really good. Or like, I would say, like, a bad day, I'd be, like, plus six. Yeah, plus exactly. Seven. And then, but I've seen you shoot really well. So I thought I didn't want them to, yeah. like, go into rec. Like, sometimes they'll tell people to do if they've never played a tournament before. And then him just go yeah. and slaughter everybody, which... So <laughs> it didn't even matter what decision yeah, it, it was decision crazy. he played in. I played out of my mind that tournament. I... If anybody knows Spokane holes, uh, I parred or I birdied hole ten, and I at down o- river. at down river, and I overdrove the hole with a flexing like back door shot with the strike. Yeah, it was just ridiculous. I overshot the hole by ten feet. Yeah, ten's uh, one of the more difficult holes on down river. It's kind of this like tight wooded, shot. yeah, tight wooded tunnel shot. There's just like one branch that hangs down, probably like eighty feet off the tee pad. That's like a claw. Yeah, and it's the most solid piece of wood I've ever seen hang off of a tree. So I threw like a big flexing shot. This is like the best shot of my life. And it went all the way around over to like hole 18 fairway. Yeah. And then came back the backside. Didn't hit anything. Ah, I, I was like a 16 foot so putt. Bad. Yeah. So anyway, I, wasn't in I made like so. four 60 foot putts. It was crazy. So I ended up winning that tournament. Well, that was first round. First round, what'd you throw? Minus four. Minus four first round, which is like, 
It's nothing crazy, but like that day, I think the best first round was yeah. minus seven, and that was from the open division. Yeah, that was from open, and you were playing an intermediate. Yeah, and then the second round, me and Nick got pizza. I think some other people might have partaken in some drinks. <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe I just typical had, disc golf yeah, move. Maybe I just had better stamina. But the second round, nobody shot well. No, I think the wind picked up and they moved all the pins to basically longs. I think. Yeah, it was like sh- that was the thing. The first round was in the shorts. Like that was when you wanted to shoot well. And I only shot like I think one down. Second round, you did pretty good compared to everybody else. Yeah, compared to everybody else, I got third in advance. But yeah. that, we did like everyone shot like crap. Everybody, kind of. everybody shot like. Terrible. Not even that bad. I don't want to take away from like how well Tanner shot. Tanner well, I, I shot minus three the second round, so I shot minus seven overall for the tournament. And I yeah. think Ross won. He won pro- open. Did he win open. He won open, he and I think he won it with. Big. I think he had minus six. So first tournament ever, I won my division, and I also beat everybody else of the tournament. So it was like yeah, he won the division. It was like the best I could have ever done. And beat every single person. So yeah, it was even a, an open division at, at all. So he was the bagger of the day for sure. Yeah, Ross won. Ross won with a total of 104. Let me go down to Tanner. Let's see. I shot 109 for the tournament. It was just two rounds. And Tanner shot 103. So yeah, he beat the open. He would have won open by one stroke too. Could have walked away with 387 bucks. Yeah, but I actually won a, a factory second. Uh, yeah, disc catcher, which is like a real disc catcher from on. It has two. It's chains. like a disc catcher without a band around the top, and it has two sets of inner chains. Really nice, yeah. It's not like these, like the traveler disc catchers that feel it's like really good uh, chains, two sets of them. Yeah, so I think you made off pretty well. Yeah, sorry to Travis. He won intermediate, or he won advanced. Yeah, Travis and Brink I, won advanced. And I, I think the, the advanced person should have won that basket, but since there was like sixty people in an intermediate. It's not sixty. No, or there's there's the most people in intermediate. Maybe yeah, the largest. Di- no, the largest division. There was nineteen people in intermediate. How many people in advance? There was only eighteen in advanced. Ooh. And then only ten in open. So intermediate was the largest division. So they gave the biggest prize. Apparently, is how it worked yeah. out. So sorry, Travis, you got a ranger bag. I, so I would have cool. loved that too. He gave that to somebody for their birthday, though. Oh, that's really yeah, awesome. Yeah, so that's really nice. Of that's really cool growing the sport like that. So, yeah, that's kind of my story. First tournament ever. I can never ma- match it. First and only. He hasn't played another one yet. I think he I think he threw, what would you do, a 9? What was the rated round? So I have him right here. It's like 980. I need, to, I need to have it added on my PG, PDGA number. I'm sorry if the audio is still oh, Tan- lag. We can't even see the round ratings because he's back he then. wasn't a member there. <laughs> he wasn't a member back then, so they don't even have round ratings. I think ratings it was 980, now. though. Well, you shot a 51 second round, and it's 990 rated. You shot 51 in second place, shot 51, and it was 990 rated. So, yeah. So, he has, like, two rounds in there, and he's one intermediate, and he's going to be, like, a 9. Dude, I want to say he's going to be, like, a 990 rated intermediate player. <laughs> no big deal. I'm playing advanced this year, though. No more intermediates. I might yeah. play some opens, too, just to try to learn. Well, he signed up as pro. That's the thing. He signed up as pro. But I can enter advanced tournaments. I just can't take money. Until, yeah. Right? No, you can take money. You can, can take, take the money. money. It just when you take the money, you're not an amateur anymore. And we'll get into all these like different rules and stipulations because they've been changing that and everything. Yeah. about that. So let's get over. That's our intro. That's yeah, our no, no, it sounds long and boring. But we also, I think we got the. I don't think I got the audio set up yet. Audio set up yet. So let's get over. That's our intro. That's yeah, our intro. Sounds long. Well, the audio is kind of loud. Is it loud? I'm talking like right in my mic. Yeah, it's a little bit. That is kind of loud. Okay, but yeah, so that's enough about us, so you guys know about us. If this is your first time seeing us, check us out. You can check us out on our YouTube channel. That's kind of was our main focus and still is when we got started. We have a bunch of disc reviews up there. We have a fun uh, six for six, which is kind of the game that we did with six holes and six different discs. Yep. And you can check that out. That's like our most viewed video on YouTube. I don't know why. Just like It was a random idea we had, and it just took off. Yeah. So we're going to continue to do that and put another one out. Our yeah. next one's going to be... With, well, with the six discs that we've reviewed. Yeah, and I so think we, we have six now. P3X, if you haven't seen them, we have a P3X review, S-Line P3X from Discmania. We have a... Doombird. A Doombird review. We got a Machete. We have a Machete review that's coming out. It's about to come out. Yeah, I'm, I'm still editing it. We're still editing it. So. Holidays made me not want to yeah, edit it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know about you, but everyone just took like a two-week break from life of these holidays, and it was nice. It was well needed to get started for this new year, to come out strong, yeah. stay focused, not to get burnt out, and spending time with family and friends 
and balancing out your life with work and disc golf. And, you know, this isn't work for us. It doesn't feel like work. This is fun. Yeah, this is but it's just another thing that we have to balance out in our lives. So we'll have the machete review coming out soon. We have first in advance. I beat Nick. That's what Barry Doggins said. Mm-hmm. Nick is not good anymore. Ah, that's what they said. I'm getting smacked on on here from my fellow disc golfers, Mr. Peters. Mr. Peters, I think if we go back and look, I've beat you a decent amount of times, but you've also beaten me. So <laughs> uh, we'll just uh, leave it at that. Uh, yeah, Travis did beat me. And Travis already got baskets. He said, I already got baskets. It's all good. Oh. Travis has got baskets, and he got the Ranger bag that he gave away, which is super nice. Thanks, him. Travis. Yeah, Travis is a good guy. Help like me out. Him. Yep, Travis killing it. So say, Ooh, I think I found out how to delay the audio. Lag isn't bad now. It isn't? Yeah, that's what they said. Pretty hard. Thank How's you. the audio? I turned the, I tried to turn the audio How's down. How's the audio? Is it not You're like kind of coming in hot. So let's get into... Oh, wait. So we're doing... Sorry, we were talking about the 6 for 6. My bad. That's called ADD, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the 6 for 6, our plan is to do six disc reviews, yep. which we've already got up to, I think. Mm-hmm. River Pro, T-Bird 3... Mm-hmm. P3X, Doombird, MD4. And the machete. And the machete. So yeah. we're going to have six after this video. Yeah. So our next video, to try to show you guys how the discs work on a course, because I've gotten some uh, constructive just, criticism. That and I just suggestions yeah. that we show how they've thrown the course. We did it for our first review a little bit, which was cool. Yeah, but it just takes so much time to record the throws on our field and then go to a course. It just yeah. me and Nick have fairly busy schedules and it's yeah. kind of hard to meet up every week. You guys rock. You rock, Barry, Doggins, Travis. So anyway, um, our plan is to use the last six discs we've reviewed in our six for six videos. So we can kind of reference in the video like, okay, so we're throwing the Doomer. This is an overstable fairway driver. I'm going to throw it on a forehand because of this, that, that, whatever. So we're going to try to reference the reviews. And so if you're watching the six for six, this is Zion. You can go back and re- uh, and watch the reviews of the discs that we're throwing. So that's our new plan going forward, as far as how we're going to structure, like kind of recapping the discs we re- yeah, reviewed with, with the, the six, six for six. Yeah, I like it, and it's a fun way for you guys to see, like you said, the, the discs fly out on the course that we show you. Yeah, and we're going to try to go to different local courses and maybe even some a little bit out of town, like maybe Corbin or something like that. Or even when we're traveling, like this year, I know uh, Tanner's going to get more into tournaments and I've, you know, did it for the last two years now and it's really fun. I'm going to GBO this year and yeah. I'm going to be in Colorado for two months or for two weeks with two different weddings. There you go. And I know there's a lot of tournament or there's, there's yeah. a lot of courses in Colorado. Maybe hang out with Eagle. <laughs> yeah. My <laughs> buddy Aaron used to be there, so he's going to show me some courses and apparently there's a disc golf course right next to the wedding venue. <laughs> so there you go. our plan is to just kind of sneak off halfway through. Sneak off through the ceremony. Yeah. This part's boring anyways. The only part that matters is the party. Yeah. <laughs> so. Very good. Yeah. Very yeah, very good. Yeah. Sweet. I think I have to get. That's what he wants us to do it. I think I have to get. Mark plays Masters now. Mark Peters plays Masters now. So we don't have to battle each other anymore. Um, so I think if I go to Farragut, though, that's a state park. So I have to, like, be certified for droning. Yeah. There's some rules with drones and state parks, but we're going to figure all that out. So, guys, that's enough about us. Let's do a discussion about maybe some stuff that's been going on in the disc golf world. Stuff like maybe some team moves that we've been seeing. I saw some people moving around. I saw Drew Gibson left Dynamic Disc. Yep. Heading over to Innova. Back where he used to be. Yeah, he used to throw for Innova. And that was kind of before, that was before I was like into disc golf and new. So I, I was kind of surprised when I found out he used to throw for Innova. Yeah. So he's back there. My opinion, I see it as a little more of a fit for him because he's... Uh, he just, in, as weird as we say, we talk about, we see like, Innova seems like the bad boys of disc golf. Yeah, they're like, know? they're like good and they know it and they're intense. Yeah. And like, they know that people want them too. They know their discs are going to sell. They know that their team is stacked. Like there's yeah. some great players and we love Innova. We throw, we both throw Innova yeah, a, shirt on. a lot. I have an Innova shirt on, nothing against them. So I think it's a great fit for Drew Gibson to go and be over there. It's going to be cool to see how far he can throw the discs that I have in my bag, like I want to see yeah, yeah. Nash a destroyer 600 feet. Totally. Well, we were just watching, if you check out our Instagram story, I was watching uh, the Shark Tooth Open that Central Coast Disc Golf just put out, and they he threw a Leopard 3 on a 447-foot hole on this, like, hyzer flip up, went right a little bit, and then just, like, slowly faded back, and he was, like, exactly pinned high. So 447 with the Leopard 3. Just no big deal. Hyzer flipping it. No big. No yeah. big. That's crazy. Uh, it was fun. If you guys haven't seen that, though, that footage, go check out the Shark Tooth Open. Uh, Central Coast. Yeah. 
one thing I thought about it, it didn't seem like the pros were playing to their poten- their potential. I don't know if you watched it at all. I haven't watched it yet, no. And I saw if you read in the comments, like it seemed like they, they were just struggling there. It's a kind of a wooded park golf with really low ceilings, so a decent m- amount of roller holes. And these super old baskets, man. These baskets were like, they call them the old Morley Field baskets. I heard Corey talking about that on Central Coast. Because I guess Morley Field in California, I don't know where that is. I see him play it a lot. It has like really old baskets, maybe similar to the ones like at Down River. That if you guys are from... What are the ones at Down River? I don't even know. They're like the old DGAs. Yeah. That's why I know they are. So the ones that can kind of spit you out, you can hit the pole. Anyway, so there was some putting. Yeah, his Firebirds uh, hit... Uh, there was some putting issues going on, um, just some drive issues going on. So it was interesting to see, but there was also those huge drives by Drew. I know he's getting used to a new bag because he just left Dynamic, so he's yeah just learning all new discs. And you can hear him; you can really show him seem like kind of showing his frustration yeah. in that video with him not knowing his discs. It'd be cool to watch that. Yeah. Is that like a recent tournament, or is that a tournament that was recorded previously? Um, I it's like somewhat recent, like within the last month oh, or okay. two. I know. Oh no, wait, it was the weekend of Thanksgiving, so it was you know it happened like within the last month. I know Central Coast filmed so many tournaments that they're just like always putting them out, and they're keeping us busy in the off season with stuff to watch, which is great. That is sweet. That's what we're trying to do: give you guys more content. Yeah, more content. But so seeing Drew switch to Innova, that's another. That's a thing. I don't know. Let us know what you guys think about that. You know, leave comments down here. Uh, Let's see. Adam said his Firebirds are cooking too. Yeah, he was throwing his Firebirds. He was throwing his Firebirds on like four hundred foot holes too. Just flat. Just yeah. Just like no biggie. Like Thunderbirds for us. Yeah, just crushing them. So Drew throws a country mile. Shout out to him. Does he have a bazooka arm? Yeah, he has a bazooka arm. He yes, yes, and yes. If you saw that on Instagram too, but did a little poll about if Drew Gibson has a bazooka arm, and you can only pick one answer, and it's yes. Uh, So what are the other big moves? Cam Cole Glazer is on Prodigy again. He yeah, was on Latitude last year, last Are two you? years, yeah. And he just went back. He just went back. Okay, I, didn't I see think that. I read that he used to be on Prodigy. Um, Nick, is it Nicholas Matheson? I'm going to go up and look up the names. I know that Cameron Mesher Schmidt is now on Prodigy. He's a. Is he local from Washington or maybe Vancouver? Um, I'm going to go to Ulta World because they've been announcing. All this stuff. Yeah, going go to on. that one. The most recent one is Prodigy Team Moves. I think the one is Nicholas Math- Madison or Matheson. So he's got... he's the protege of uh, Ricky Wysocki. Like Ricky Wysocki had like this uh, tournament or something, and whoever won the tournament, I think this is right. I could be blowing this up, but uh, <laughs> I think they had a tournament. Whoever won got sponsored by Latitude and was like Ricky's protege. He played in that one tournament. He's on the lead card. Uh, the I think it was the Vibram Open. Is that the one in the hills? I can't remember. Is the Vibram Open the one where they end on that long hole? That's Vibram to the Open's right? at Maple Hill. In, uh, that's the one where they it, like end on the right with that, like. It has like rocks and there's bleachers yeah. by it. So and everyone watches you. I believe he was on the lead card on that tournament. So, so, so he's it's pretty Cole good. Glazer, uh, Cole Glazer, Cameron Cole Glazer, Matt Oram, Nicholas Masters. Yes, Masters. Nicholas Masters. Yeah. And I think. Did, did he win? What he won something to be on the lead card, I can't remember. And Cameron Messerschmidt, so they just joined the ranks of their. I don't think he won anything to be on the lead card. I think he played to get on the lead card. Yeah, he was like he was like I think up to the third round or up to the final round he was on it. So Matt Orham and Nicholas Masters all make the move from Latitude sixty four. So they go from Latitude to Prodigy. Now this is different because last year it seemed like everybody was leaving Prodigy. Yeah, if you read that uh, All to World article i think it shows it says that prodigy has seven out of the top 20 disc golfers prodigy does yeah yeah so it's still very relevant yeah and will shoestrick i think he owns it well yeah i know that i've heard yeah. talks and and stuff about how uh, will shoestrick actually has like yeah a decent amount of money invested in prodigy i saw him make an instagram post yesterday that said he was going to be on the team again he's excited for how the company's growing it and is so, and, and this be- is different from last year like i said i feel like people were leaving uh, prodigy, you know, with the with the um, big germ was leaving. Paige Pierce left. Yeah, big names. Uh, some, some other big names uh, going on, and then now, but you still have Katrina Allen, still Paul signing. Ulibarri, Will Shustrick. Now you have let's see, Matt Orm, Nicholas Masters, Cameron Coolglazer, Cameron Messerschmidt. Really good players. Yeah, and Cameron Messerschmidt. I don't know about you guys, but he is local to the Pacific Northwest area. I'm pretty sure I've seen him. Like he was out here at the Lilac. 
uh, Country Cup, the Four Mountains Tournament at the nice disc golf complex, private disc golf complex out here in Spokane, Washington. So that's cool to see him, to see him being a big name on Prodigy. Yeah. At the end of that uh, Alter World thing, they basically mention that these big moves basically kind of uh, dispel the myth that they were going under last year. Yeah. Yeah. So I, That's what I'm seeing right now. I'm seeing that there's life being breathed back into Prodigy, not saying they're ever gone, but just with the people leaving, it seemed like, what's going on? And now they got names coming back. Yeah, which know, is really cool. I don't know if it was financial or... You know, I heard rumors people would talk about saying, you know, they promised a bunch of things to their players and then they d- didn't come through. And so that's why people are leaving and whatnot. But with the way things are moving inside of the disc golf world, we're seeing, you know, we're seeing like women leaving companies like Innova, like Valerie Jenkins with Innova. Because yeah. they're not being recognized to Discraft, which instantly put her on a pro model. Thrasher. Yeah, yeah, the Thrasher. Those Z Thrashers are money. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so it's cool to see that. So I th- I'm thinking that maybe some stuff is turning around at Prodigy. I don't know what goes on behind the scenes, but if people are going back, that's obviously we, the actions speak louder than the words. Yeah, and we have a lot of requests to review Prodigy, and I've mm-hmm. never thrown Prodigy. Have you ever thrown Prodigy disc? Uh, I had one. I had like an F7, and then I kind of traded it. It was an unstable fairway driver. Nothing against it. I just think that yeah. I didn't know what I had, especially because I am still feel pretty inexperienced with disc golf. I feel like my form and game is always improving. So I think back about at discs that I've had before that I wish I would have now because I, yeah. I didn't know what I had or I didn't know how to throw it properly. Yeah, I remember my first T-Bird I got. I was like, this thing's a meat hook. I just thought I could never throw a backhand. Yeah. And now, and now I have like, like three. Now we're reaching for the T-Birds all the time. Totally. So the other good pickups, uh, well, the people that stayed are four-time world champ, Paul. I mean, he's Mr. Nova, so he yeah. stayed. We oh, got Waisaki. Yeah. I don't, I don't think... We'll see a day that Paul leaves into the, unless somebody comes knocking with some money, <laughs> maybe. But also, I feel like Paul, like the way he represents himself, he seems to be a man of integrity, a man of loyalty. Yeah. Uh, so the way they've like supported him and for the right reasons, he's four time world champ. And he had an off year last year, like he said. Like I think we all could say that you he think was last not year. Off. He had an off year. Well, I mean, off year, never finished outside of the top three. He That's did have that one year. DNF where he was like had a hurt back. But yeah. I'm not going to hold that against him. And he came back. But he made a Facebook year. post that said, "With an off year, I still tied for first. Yeah, with an off year, I don't think he had. I just an think off year. I just think last year he wasn't McBeasting as much as he was the year before. We're talking about 2017, this yeah. previous year that just happened. But anyway, let's talk about Paul. He. Uh, Adidas Outdoor is not sponsoring him anymore. How do you feel no, about that? I don't think that was them not sponsoring him. I think that was him leaving. You think so? Because there's other people still sponsored by them. I haven't seen announcements, but I haven't seen announcements of people leaving. Like I know Philo is sponsored by Adidas. I know is he? Uh, Kona is sponsored by Adidas. Uh, a lot of the... Are they sponsored or do they just put hashtag Adidas Outdoor on their Instagram? <laughs> I think they're sponsored. I got really... You think, because I know if you go to Adidas Outdoor, Paul used to be one of the sponsored athletes. They have like a lot of mountain climbers and some other um, hikers and like... Uh, Juliana Corver is sponsored by them, by Adidas. Uh, the old, she's an older, you know, veteran woman player, hmm. like five or six time world champ, maybe even more. Don't quote me on that. So yeah, I thought that was interesting. So him moving, yeah, I think that I just bought those Adidas and they're super nice shoes. Yeah, they're great. You, you but can I go can... to a course and not see people not wearing them. It was the shoe that you know the, the disc golf shoe, and I also had a pair myself. You know, I just got a pair of Kings. Uh, so Kings, those Kings though, <laughs> the Kings are really nice. They look nice. So what do you th- what do you think? Do you think that he has something else in mind? Is he going to Nike? Has he been in works with Nike? Has... I don't think so. Dude, Nike's smart though. They like they. I see them. I skateboard as well, and I see them. Are they have a huge skateboarding side of their company, and they pay you. You see uh, skateboarders moving brand to brand. Yeah, and it's the money. And I think that Nike's smart enough to see the potential of disc golf growing the way that it's moving, being like, man, who's the top right now? Boom. All eyes are on Paul McBeth, or probably all eyes are on Ricky. I know he wears Nike shoes. Ricky wears Nike shoes. He does wear Nike shoes, so maybe even Ricky's going to come out with a sponsorship. That'd be really sweet. But it is interesting to see Paul leave Adidas. Why? I don't know. So I thought that was interesting. So the other big moves, Dynamic picked up Dustin Keegan. Yeah. And Zoe. Andy Zoe and, Zoe and <laughs> Andy Zodike. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe and Dyke and Dustin Keegan. Which they do pretty cool things. I think you guys, if you are following us on Facebook or Instagram, they have a uh, nonprofit or- organization called um, 
it's un- Disc University. Universal Play, Disc Golf Universal Play. Yeah. And it's their their whole goal of that is to try to introduce disc golf into uh, local schools and yeah. use it as like a life sports type c- training is how I kind of... And, Z- and Zoe was a former PE teacher. A lot so, of disc golfers were former PE teachers or, or for- teachers. Yeah. And um, I think that she talks about how she wants to incorporate it into the curriculum of the youth. So yeah. it's like... It's pretty much being taught to every kid that's coming up. It's something every kid is experiencing disc golf at an early age, which is huge for the sport. Especially, yeah, especially. I mean, I think it shout really. Shout out to Zoe and Dustin for doing that. I know that's like mainly Zoe's thing, and Dustin helps out, but they're both from Eugene, Oregon, so they're somewhat f- close to us. Yeah, and I think West it's Coast. a. I think it's a great move. They both came from Anova. Yeah, and I think it's a great move because dynamic is all about growing the sport. Yeah. From the younger generations, that's why they're hosting Junior yeah, Worlds. Yeah, Junior Worlds for the next two years. They have, they even out in Emporia, like where Dynamics located, they have a bunch of courses like Peter Pan, Jones, West Jones East. But they also have smaller courses I've seen at like local community colleges and even at the elementary schools. When I was out there, they had like shorter, smaller courses, uh, kind of palated towards the youth and growing the sport. I know they're they, not making a championship. You know, people having to go throw five hundred foot bombs the first time they go out. And I know they have a lot of like I would say beginner slash younger molds i didn't know there's a putter yeah, they, they have beginner series days yeah. that are more understable stuff like i think the warrant is one or like, super understable there's yeah, a putter exactly. though that's so the really understable ones are are kind of like but there's i know there's, they're discs. like smaller discs too oh yeah up. oh the junior discs yeah, yeah like like they have mini or junior judges the junior emac truths which are like this, you know, they're not, it's not a mar- mini marker. It's like a little bit bigger, um, like, a, I guess you say a quarter size marker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So those are pretty sweet. So I think it's a good move for them. Uh, for, for Zoe and Dustin to move there and towards a company that really their ideals seem to align pretty well. Yeah. So that was a cool move. It did uh, dynamic pick up anybody else. Was- yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited about this. Peter McBride, you know, who Peter McBride yeah. is. so Peter McBride, I think he's a central California guy. Um, first time I saw Peter McBride was at the 2016 Rocky Mountain Championships in Bozeman, Montana. Which, uh, if you guys can, if you guys are wondering what tournament tournament that is, you can go see uh, 2016 and 2017 coverage of that tournament on Central Coast. So I saw Peter out there, and he his form to me was just like so perfect. I love how he puts. He does this like spin putt, pow, and he like. He, eagle, he did a huge ego on one of these holes. So just super memorable guy. Love his form. He was on Legacy Disc, killing yeah. it there. And then now he's on Dynamic. So And I see he's a really nice guy. I think he's only like 21 years old. Uh, so he's still you know up and coming. We're going to be seeing a lot of him. And I know Ian and them talk about him so highly over at Central Coast about how nice of a guy he is. So it seems like a good fit. Nice yeah. guy. Nice company. Dynamic. And it's funny how Peter players kind of... see him do that. All get attracted to you can like you can tell what dynamic is looking for in a pro when mm-hmm. they sponsor them. Yeah, like I feel like in Nova, they're getting like the guys that are going to be top place in top ten. Like every single not to say the dynamic won't because I mean you have Paige Pierce who's four time four time world champ. Four to I, I think she's four time. Yeah. yeah, but anyway, like yeah, it is. It's four. Maybe it's just because dynamics on social media more, but you can just tell that all of those people love disc golf and they're super excited. Not, yeah, it's not about going and shooting. Obviously, shooting well is is the point of disc golf, and we all love to shoot well. But they're, they're getting people like Eric Oakley. Eric Oakley's not even thousand rated. I'm not trying to. Ba- I'm pretty sure. Let me check my quote. But I'm not bagging on him. But he, what him and Tina bring to disc golf, yeah, is why they and his skill are why they're. Why they sponsor him? Because of the clinics that they do, like the positive attitude. Like the I way. love Eric and Tina. Like, yeah, they're awesome. So I like watching their uh, their RV blogs about like restoring that the, yeah. the RV they have yeah. for touring, like trying to fix leaks, and that's super interesting to me. I really like the tiny home idea. Yeah, I think it'd be cool very... to have a tiny home. And then you see Paige Pierce has her own van too. And then Nate Perkins she's down there's working on it. I think she's. Because she wasn't rocking the van life. I think this whole next season we're going to see her. I think there's, I, I think there's a new culture in Oh, he's 1,004. Eric, I take it back. He's 1,004. <laughs> How dare rated, you? Uh, as of December 12th. Congrats on being 1,000 rated. That's huge. That's like dreamlike. I just remember seeing it before. He was like 990. So I'm not saying that. What's the difference between five points? I mean, I'm like 980. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> there, there's a difference between that. But anyways, 
I see them sponsoring him and being working with them so much because of who they are and what they represent. So yeah, whale pants. Is, yeah, whale pants. And then yeah, like you say, the the Innova people are just, you know, there's kicking butt and taking names. It seems they're yeah. really good. All you see is uh, Paul McBeth and Na- or and Drew Gibson. They're just like having a gym beef. The entire gym time. Beef. They're having the good, this cool beef though because yeah. they're like pushing each other to to lose some weight and to get stronger and and that, and the bet is that somebody like the winner is there a bet? Yeah, the winner gets to pick the first disc that they throw on the first hole of Memorial. And if you guys have ever watched Memorial, the first hole at Fountain Hills is like a it's like three it's like a three fifty or maybe even four hundred. I can't even remember how far it is, but it's a crush. They're all throwing power drivers and the pin placement is like ten feet next to the water and about ninety percent of the people dunk their disc in the water or play it safe up to the right. Is that the one with the, like the rock right next to it? Like no. there's like rock big rocks right next to it? Uh, uh it's like the water and it's like a rock kind of like a wall, a cement wall. But they're gonna pick the winner gets to pick the other person's disc. I feel like Drew could throw any putter over that water. I don't think so. I don't think they could throw a putter. Maybe. I don't want to underestimate them, but because they're both really far throwers. But it's like, it's a crush. They're all throwing power drivers, destroyers off of that thing. For instance, they're both Innova guys. And uh, it's going to be crazy. Cameron Mester Schmidt is from Vancouver. So Ross Ace. I haven't even been. Yeah, Ross did. <laughs> yeah, Ross did Ace. It. Go check that out. So if you guys are from Spokane, you know that Ross Lou or Ace Lou, as we call him, because this guy gets aces like every out day. the wahoo every day. It's just like he's getting an ace, and there's a video of him acing. There's a video of it. Yeah, uh, on YouTube. I it, wish I could figure out how to make this played. work. I can do it. Uh, okay, so Cameron Messerschmidt, he's from Vancouver. Vancouver, Washington. Okay, got it. So thank you for clarifying that. So that's cool to see a local Washington guy getting big name recognition on Prodigy. So yeah, who, who else was big moves? Did Latitude get any they big had, moves? Well, Dynamic got more people. They got so they got Cole Glazer. They got AJ Risley. They didn't get Cole Glazer. They lost Cole Gla- or Dynamic. Cole Glazer was on Prodigy. Prodigy, yeah. Sorry. Um, where was it? Sorry. Oh, Peter McBride, Jessica Keegan, AJ Risley. There's a couple more. Chris Clemens, he oh. was on Lat and he moved to Dynamic. I wonder what that's like to move from like Latitude to Dynamic because you're inside of you be- the Trilogy family. Yeah, because Rick, Ricky throws felons, right? He throws Dynamic. Oh, yeah, they can throw any that they want. Maybe it's just like, I know that companies, when they're sponsoring players, they give them like weekly or monthly stipends or, like on top of their tournament pay. Yeah, maybe. So maybe it's, like, maybe it's like a way that like Latitude, the company, basically pays them instead of dynamic paying. Does Maybe. that make sense? I don't know. Yeah. I think it's more of like a separating the the payments to the players on top of just tournament winnings. Yeah. yeah. So there's some big moves, right? There's probably some other moves that one, we're forgetting. But... One guy that I remember stayed, Chris Dickerson. He's one of my favorite players to watch yeah. from Prodigy. He's yeah. still on Prodigy. He's one of the top ten, I Chris think. Chris Dickerson is? Yeah. I thought he was on Dynamic. No, Chris oh. Dickerson. He's on... I should trust him because that's his favorite dude. He's not my favorite, but he's what? definitely fun to watch. Yeah, he's like watching the lead cards. I think he's probably one of the most common prodigy players besides yeah. maybe Paul. I hear his up. name all the time, like on Smashbox podcast. Like he has like know. a yellow upshot disc that always parks. I don't know what it is. They talk yeah. about it in their videos too. They're like that yellow disc again. It's gonna it's be that yellow disc again. It's so, that yellow disc again. So that's cool. That's kind of our our pros. We're thinking about doing a segment called Pros and Contests. Yes. Con. And we're going to go over pros and what they're doing and uh, maybe how they place. We'll go over like maybe the top popular ones. Yeah. Um, and then we'll go over contests as far as like what tournament's most recent. Yeah. So kind that might like be a little segment. Kind of stuff that happens throughout the week in disc golf. We want to try to do this once a week because it's kind of fun just sitting here and, and talking to each other about what happened. disc golf and what's going on. So maybe we can just be that. If you want to get filled in on what happened in disc golf, this could be the podcast for it. Definitely. I know there's other ones, but... Who can't use more content, right? Yeah. One more thing I wanted to talk about before we wrap stuff up, because I feel like we've been talking for a while, is these rule changes that are going on. Now, I know there's a bunch of different ones, like ones with the markers and kind of rules for foot faults, uh, ones with like amateur players taking cash and stuff, and we can get all those later, but one I want to talk about that recently I talked about is the, uh, no, not <laughs> not that, but uh, but the tobacco policy. So uh, the PDGA put out a tobacco policy uh, update for the 2018 season saying that um, 
that no tobacco use, including you know cigarettes, chewing tobacco, e-cigarettes, uh, will be allowed to be used on the property during any majors or national tier events. So that's so that's stuff like uh, glass blown open. That's stuff you know any of any of the majors or the NTs. Like you guys know what I'm talking about Beaver State Fling. Um, the what's the, what's the majors are in T? Like, what can you break down the different tournaments? Since I'm new, I've only played one tournament and won it, so I don't know about. So I know that so a majors NT is like the tier, so it's a national tour stop. So you have like C tier, B tier, A tier, -tier and uh, then like those. So the national tour stops, are like the actual stops that go towards like because there's like a national tour point series that the pros compete for. Is that what you're talking about as far as getting points to go to amateur worlds? Well, you get points for like any tournament that you play in, depending on the tier. Now, like you probably get a lot of points for playing in an NT. So, like I know, like when you play in an A tier, for every for for however many people you tie or beat in your division is how many points you get. So, for an A tier, it's like times ten. So, say there's fifty people in the division, I beat everybody. So, like just outright won first place. So I beat fifty people times that by ten. That's five hundred. I got five hundred points for that. And your points accumulate to like qualify for invitations. So like for M Worlds in advance, you need 1,500 points on the previous season and to like pass the officials exam and to be a current member to get an invitation and sign up for Amateur Worlds the next year. So this past year, I got like 3,200 points. I went and played a bunch of bigger Damn. tournaments. Yeah, just stocked up. And uh, playing in those larger A tiers, and you know, as an amateur, you're not going to play in like a lot of NTs. The NTs are all for like the open classifications. But you're going to get points. So anyways, uh, back to the tobacco policy. They're saying that any of the majors or NTs or any subsequent events ran with the event. So at Glassbone, they have a bunch of different like flex start C tiers or like lower tiers. Now, that's run in conjunction with Glass Blown Open. So you would also not be able to use tobacco on the premises during there. And this is like not during the round, during the round. And, you know, uh, so... When they right, obviously when they say no tobacco right away, people are gonna freak out. Whether they're yeah. smokers or people who used to smoke or people who think it's a great idea, everyone's gonna. Does it count chewing tobacco? I haven't read the. Yeah, okay. it's like all tobacco use, and you know people can say, well, pe how people are gonna s sneak a dip in and like just swallow a spit. Well, they can like, oh, they can deal with that stomach cancer later. Yeah. But uh, so what it's saying is during majors and national tour events. Now this isn't saying your local C or B tiers or even A tiers. I think still not. Now, I've played in a lot of tournaments that even already had a no-smoking policy, whether it was on a private property because they don't want it to be burned down by somebody flicking their cigarette butt out yeah, or not. But they also uh, usually make a designated smoking area, and that's another part of the rule that came out was the designate – unless there was an area designated uh, – for not during the rounds by the TD, which I imagine that they would accommodate for just for ease of them, you know? Yeah. We're going to make a lot of people mad if they don't let them have their cigarettes, you know? Especially smokers. So there was a lot of uproar about that. And now, if you go to the PGA website, says, it says it's under review again. So they heard the uproar. Now, I got to ask you, what do you how do you feel about that? So if the TD can set up a specific place for people to have their smokes, and it's only at majors and national tier events and subsequent tier events. What do you think about the rule overall? I guess, how do you feel about it? You're not a smoker, so. I don't smoke. I don't drink either. I'm kind of straight-laced. Uh, <laughs> so, but I do respect people's ability to smoke. I don't get too offended when people smoke on the course. And most of the time, people are like, hey, you mind if I smoke? Mm -hmm. So that's, all, that's usually, I'm, I'm cool with that. But I will say, a lot of people are mad with this rule change. But I think if you go to most parks, at least in our area, it says no smoking as soon as you get to hole one. So yeah, most parks, like if you're if, like. if you're wanting to be legal beagle and follow all the rules, like you shouldn't be smoking at the courses anyway because they're even state during parks. casual rounds. Where yeah, it's, it, the signs are talking about. And also, like with the one local tournament we did, um, I know that there is like a uh, a side pot that. Um, Big Mike did mm -hmm. for picking up cigarette butts. Yeah. So like, I know cigarette butts kind of like, it's basically littering on the course and we don't, we want to grow the sport as big as we can. And in order to get uh, the most broad amount of people, you have to be accommodating to the younger generation mm -hmm. and families and stuff like that. And I don't think you're going to be able, if I had a kid, I wouldn't want the, the people who don't smoke as well, which are going to be probably be kids. Yeah, hopefully. Let's hope the kids aren't smoking on the course now. So, 
that being in mind, I think no smoking on the court on during tournaments is should be something that's already been should mm-hmm. be done. Mm-hmm. If you think about other sports, uh, you don't see football players smoking on the side of the like the players smoking on the sidelines. Mm-hmm. You don't see them drinking anything besides Gatorade mm-hmm. or water. Or even you don't even see, like yeah you see people drinking beer. I think Marshawn Lynch. He, yeah, well that's. But you don't see people smoking cigarettes because there's designated areas for it. Yeah. Like they talked about that would probably be available at the national tier of major events. So, yeah, I think I think most TDs to accommodate the people that would like to smoke between rounds and stuff like that. Because um, I know a lot of comments I saw, at least in our local things, were like, what if I just want to, like, you know, kind of de-stress after a round to get ready for the next one? Mm-hmm. If you need a cigarette in order to do that, I think a designated smoking area wouldn't be that hard to set up. No, and I imagine they will because of the ease of just instead of being like, nope, no smoking here, you have to go off the property. Yeah. Then just say, you can go over there in that little 20 foot by 20 foot box. Yeah. Any TD who wants to save himself some stress is going yeah, to Yeah, like that. me and you are thinking about maybe running not even probably a big. Yeah, not and this NT. is national tier and majors. Like, yeah. That's what people are getting worked up about. How often are these weekend warriors playing national tiers or major events? They're not. These are for the pros. Yeah, so if you're. If you're playing well, the at those... spectators too, but that's what I mean. It's talking about the spectators too, which maybe people are like, I want to go and have a good time and have some smokes and watch my favorite pros because the national t- tour is coming to town. I, I could see that, but if I was a pro, say I was Paul McBeth or Ricky Wysocki, just, let's just, just say, it. just imagine it. I don't think I would like somebody smoking in the gallery behind me getting smoke. You know yeah. what I mean? Because we're... Especially if you're Paul, because yeah. I know, we know he's a, he's a healthy guy. I know he doesn't smoke. So yeah, I think it it should be. It might bother him. I think I don't know. I think the rule is fine. The the one that they're placing in, because I, I agree. If we and want to make this a professional sport, you need to act like professionals, and I don't think smoking on the course is part of that. Yeah, and that and like you keep saying, like on the course, and the rule and the uproar was like just during these events. It's not saying you have to stop smoking to own a disc golf disc. <laughs> yeah. You know, like people acted like. They just got their, you know, First Amendment taken away or, or whatever. It's uh, it's an interesting debate. But now we – so I think that the PDJ saw everybody's response to it. So you think they're going to change it? I do. I think they're going to come back and just rephrase it and say not during the rounds again. Because it was not during the rounds. It was like from the two-minute warning till your scorecard was in. I think I remember last year you had a guy in your car that was smoking during the round, wasn't that? Yeah. And, and it was and, kind but, of like an issue. You're like, hey, we're not supposed to do this. Yeah, because sometimes – uh, like, so, like I said, certain events just like already make that rule a thing. It's not because it's to the TV's discretion. So like at, at Bohart, they're like, dude, we're not burning this place down. It's like, you know, 90 degrees out here in the summer. It's a beautiful landscape. Yeah. And somebody's smoking and flicking their cigarette. But so it's like the rule was that whoever did it and he got kicked out of the tournament, uh, if they're caught smoking, he was smoking uh, marijuana, though. Which was like he like went off and like just took a quick hit and like blew it out. But we had a, somebody in our card who was like not okay with that. They're a rule follower, and that's and he told the TD. And they're, the TD a rule, yeah. they're a rule follower, and he, you know, and he took him out. So that's already in. So effect. so basically, the rule is from no smoking during the round to no smoking at the whole entire tournament at the whole like venue. So I think they're going to retract it back to during the round. That makes more sense. Yeah. So that's what I think. It said it's under review right now. So our next podcast, we'll go back and talk about what they did. So we both don't think it's a terrible rule. I think they could have rephrased it a little differently and to not step on so many toes. But you're going to step on somebody's toes no matter what you do in this world. So yeah. And the PDGA has to – they want to take this sport in the right direction. So if taking tobacco use out of it and making it be a, a PG event – is what it is what it's going to be. I can do that. I cannot smoke. I don't even smoke, and I cannot. You know, I think people can handle not having a smoke while they're on the property, or if they really have to, just go leave the property. Like, yeah. I'm sure the property isn't that big. I think the other thing is, if you talk to the general population that's never played disc golf, mm-hmm. I think the general consensus. thought consensus of disc golf is. Oh, those are people that just like like to smoke and a bunch of potheads and, and drink, playing. yeah, and drink on the course. Because I know a lot of people take a six pack in the top of their Ranger bags or whatever. Yeah, there's um, nothing wrong with that. We're not nothing wrong with that, that at all. But if you want to change the culture of disc golf and how the general public sees the sport, and that's you're gonna have to make some rule changes like that to make it more 
um, accessible to everyone. Yeah, and it's presentable. And that's not saying that the casual rounds have to stop having a six pack with you or anything yeah. like that. But if we want the national tour stops and the majors to move forward and us to be looked at in the correct light and the professionalism, just like we do on the other, every other professional sports league or association on TV. Yeah, like, we're going to have to make some changes. When you're in high school and you're going to baseball games or football games or wrestling matches or basketball matches, you couldn't you couldn't smoke. You couldn't, you know, it's on school property. Yep. You couldn't smoke. You couldn't, and you could enjoy those things still. So I think that's how disc golf should be. So I think it's a decent rule, but I don't, I wouldn't mind if they changed it. Yeah. It's not, it's, I wasn't bothered by it then, like what, before they changed it. So I don't think that you'll be bothered by it. I'll be bad. bothered by it now. So I'm, I'm interested to see what their under review is. Cause they kind of, they put that up pretty quickly after the, you know, three day uproar that we had. So cool. this is our first podcast. I think we're going to wrap up. Our battery and our camera is going to die, and instead of switching it out and seeing what that will do to our stream, we're just going to end it. Yeah, that was fun. I really like talking. That went a lot longer than I thought. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand how podcasts go for hours without them realizing I could it. just ramble to you guys all day. We're going to have more topics, more discussions, more organization. We're going to get this thing rolling. Let us know if you guys want to hear us talk about anything else. Suggestions that you have of what we could have done better for this. Audio suggestions, video I'll try suggestions. To get this software working. This is my first time working with yeah. Sparko Cam, and that is able to use our DSLR. Those new mics. Yeah. So, sweet guys, we, th- we thanks for tuning in. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Utility Disc Golf. Check out Utility Disc Golf on there. We do giveaways with that. Check us out on YouTube. We put out videos once a week. These last week, we were kind of shaky because of the holidays. I know a yeah. lot of people were. We're getting back on track. And we have the Discraft Machete review coming out for y'all soon. It's already filmed. It just needs to be finished edited. Super overstable driver. Super overstable. The... So you can check us out there. You know, you can watch us on Twitch. We're going to be do- trying to do these podcasts pretty often. Should we talk about some sponsors for 2018? Uh, yeah, we can. Yeah, we can try to wrap that up real quick. Uh, right now, we're still working with Disc Golf Center. DiscGolfCenter.com uh, sponsors us with all of our discs. They send us discs, do our giveaways. They're awesome, guys. Free shipping on any order over $12. Try to find a disc that you're going to buy for under twelve dollars if it's any type of uh, premium plastic. Premium plastic, so it's really awesome. So shout out to them. Check them out. We also just started working with Disc Life, which is a clothing apparel company. Yeah, DiscLife.co. Dot co. They're uh, from Tennessee. They're two disc golfers, just like Nick and I. Uh, they reached out to us to have a sp- uh, just like work with us. They just want to collaborate work with us. So we're going to have a code coming out. On the website. Yeah, I'm not sure if they have it up yet, but it's if not. you use the we'll code, we'll announce that on our social media and stuff. I'll just tell you now, though. Okay, but it's not going to work until like maybe next week. But anyway, if you use the code utility at checkout, you get free standard shipping on your T-shirt orders. They have really cool. They're basically just like graphic casual tees, and they're actually there's pretty like an sweet. Ace one, a basket, there's a mando one, kind of just fun one. Like disc golf type ones. And we're hoping to have some utility disc golf ones come out with them as well. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see All what we can. Stuff. We're gonna see what we can do to talk them. Talk to them. Well, they also have like hats. They have beanies and trucker hats and we're gonna be five panel hats. Their, we're gonna be rocking some of their apparel soon. Send, they're sending it over. So yeah, they're. I think they just. I think they just started, kind of like we did. Yep. They have about the same amount of followers on Instagram. Yep. Uh, but their quality looks really great. We're mm-hmm. gonna get some shirts, I think, pretty soon. We'll be wearing those in the and next streams and whatnot. They look really soft, at least from the pictures. <laughs> they look soft. So we're excited be about that. Shout out Disc Life. So yeah, and Dynamic for, too. Dynamic still working with us. They just. You know, I just feel like we get we're just buddies with Anthony, and no big uh, deal. and uh, he just helps us out. He sends us some products sometimes, and just uh, what, uh, just supports us. So shout out to Dynamic and um, and every other disc golfer out there that's supporting us because we appreciate you guys. That's why we're doing this. That's why we're talking to you. Yeah. Of you. So sick. All right, guys. Well, we're gonna sign off. That's episode Until one. Till next time. Stay fly. Stay fly. Stay fly. Bye. I'm gonna see if I can save this. Boom!